Hi guys, my name is Melissa, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about prime numbers. And so, let's just review what a prime number is. So, a prime number is a number that is only divisible by itself and the number 1. And so, common prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So we're going to review some prime numbers. And so again, prime numbers, also just known as primes, they only have two factors. And the two factors are going to be one and itself. So for example, if we have 47, its only factors are 1 and itself. And if a number is not a comp if a number is not a prime number, then we call those composite numbers. And many numbers are composite numbers. So they have more than two factors. And common composite numbers are even numbers because all even numbers have two as a factor besides one and itself. But what we should remember is that for prime numbers, the only even prime number is two, since it has one and two as a factor. But for any other even number, it always has two it, it always has 1 itself and 2 as a factor, and so it's always going to be a composite number, but the only even prime number is going to be 2. And also 0 and 1 are not prime numbers. And it's 1 is not a prime number because it, its factor is 1 only, so it has 1 factor instead of having 2 factors. So that was a simple review of prime numbers, and so we'll go into our first example problem. And so it says, list all the numbers from 1 to 30 and circle all the prime numbers. And so it says, we listed numbers from 1 to 30, and now we're going to circle prime numbers. So, as we mentioned, 2 is a prime number, and also um, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29 are going to be our prime numbers from 1 to 30. Now we're going to look at example 2. So, the sum of two prime numbers is 25. Find the product of the two prime numbers. So we have prime num we have x and y. So those are going to be our um, those are those are going to be our numbers, and x and y are both prime. And x plus y equals 25. And so we're going to look for possible combinations. It can be 2 and 23. Right. Since both are prime numbers, and 2 plus 23 equals 25. And so to find the product, we're going to do 2 times 23, and that gives us 46. Now, example 3 says the product of two prime numbers is 51. So xy is 51. What is the sum of the two prime numbers? So we're looking for x plus y. And what is the difference of the two prime numbers? And so we know that 51 divided by 3 is equal to 17. And 3 and 17 are both prime numbers. And so for numbers like 51, um, I just automatically think of 3 because we know that 3 times 7 is 21 and it ends with 1. But I know that for some of you guys it will take some time to figure out 
the correct combination. So basically, these questions are like trial and error problems. So now we're going to look for the sum. So it's going to be 20. And the difference is going to be 14. Now we'll look at example four. Okay, so prime factorization is the process where a number is expressed as the product of two or more prime numbers. And so we're gonna perform prime factorization. So just to give us get, give you guys a quick recap on prime factorization. Um, so basically we have a given number we have a number and then we're going to branch out from it so for example if we have a number like 10 we can express that as 5 times 2 and 5 and 2 are both prime numbers so we're going to stop there but then if we have a number like 60 we break it down into 6 and 10 6 can be further broken down to 2 times 3. And 10 can be further broken down into 2 times 5. And all of these numbers are prime numbers. So our prime factorization of 60 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, which um, in proper expression is going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 times 5. And so that was a quick review of prime factorization. And so now we'll solve some example problems. So we have 180, and this textbook goes horizontally, but usually I like to go down vertically because that helps me like visualize better. So it's up to you guys. So if we have 180, we can break it down into 2 and 90. So 2 already is a prime number, so we'll circle it. And the reason why we circle it is because sometimes one side might go down like longer, and it can end, and the result, final resulting prime numbers will end up here, and you might end up losing or forgetting about the numbers on the side, on the other side, which is above. Um, slightly more above or on the top so you might forget about it so I usually like to circle it out to make sure that I know it's a prime number then we can express 90 as 2 times 45 again circle the 2 45 can be expressed as 5 times 9 5 is a prime number and 9 can be expressed as 3 times 3 so we can express the prime factorization of 180 is going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5, which is 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5. Now we're going to do the prime factorization of 1,386. And so we have 1,386, express it as 2 times 693, so circle the 2. 693 can be expressed as 3 times 231, 3 is a prime number. And 231 can be expressed as 3 times 77. And 77 can be expressed as 7 times 11. And so the prime factorization of 1,386 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 11 which is 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 7 times 11. Now we're going to do the prime factorization of 1,260. So 
So we can express this number as 2 times 630. 2 is a prime number. And 630 can be further broken down into 3 times 210. 210 can be expressed as 21 times 10. 21 can be broken down into 3 and 7. 10 can be broken down into 2 and 5. And all of these are prime numbers. And so we can express 1260 as 2 times 2. 2 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 7. So that is going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 times 7. Now we have the number 2,574. We can break that down into 2 and 1,287. So 2 is a prime number. And then... 1,287 can be further broken down into 2, and th I mean 3, and 429. 3 is a prime number. And 429 can be broken down into 3 and 143. So 3 is a prime number. And 143 can be broken down into 3 and, well, not into 3. It can be broken down into 11 and 3, 13, 11 and 13. And 11 and 13 are both prime numbers, so we can express 2,574 as 2 times 3 times 3 times... 11 times 13, which is going to be 2 times 3 to the power of 2 times 11 times 13. So that was prime factorization. And now we'll look at example 5. So example 5 says the area of a rectangle is 165 centimeters squared. Find the possible values of the length and width of the rectangle. So again, we're going to do prime factorization. And so it can be broken down into 5 and 33. 33 can be broken down into 3 and 11. And so we can express 165 as 3 times 5 times 11. So now that we have possible, now that we have the prime numbers, we can make multiple combinations with this. So if one side is 3, then the other side can be 5 times 11, which is 55. Or if one side is 5, the other side can be 33. And if one side is 11, the other side can be 15. So these are going to be our three possible combinations. And we also need to include 1 and 165 as well. So we have four different combinations. Now let's take a look at our next problem. So it says... Circle all the prime numbers between 30 and 60 from the numbers below. Again, um, I'll just go over this really quickly. So 31 is a prime number, uh, and then 37, right? 39 can is not a prime number, just in case it confuses you, because 3 is a factor. Then we have 41 and 43, 47... 49 and then 
not 49. 49, sorry, is not is not a prime number. 49 is not a, not a prime number because it is divisible by 7, right? 7 times 7 is 49. Then we have 53, a prime number, and 59. Then, um, so I'll give you guys two minutes to solve both problems. And I really want you guys to try to um, write out your write out your process. And so, for number two, um, think of it as x plus y equals thirty nine. And then try to find prime numbers that match that. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys in two minutes. And so we'll look at the two problems now. And so um, the sum of two prime numbers is 39, so x plus y is 39. And so we're going to look for prime numbers that can fit the equation. And so we would have... and 37 which works so the product would be 2 times 37 which is 74 and then problem 3 says list all the one digit two digit and three digit numbers using the numbers 1 2 and 3 each digit is to be used only once and what are the prime numbers in the list so for one digit numbers Using 1, 2, and 3, we have 1, 2, and 3. For two-digit numbers, um, if the times place is going to be 1, possible numbers are going to be 12 and 13. Now, if the times place is 2, possible numbers is 21, possible numbers are 21 and 23. And if the times place is 3, possible numbers are 31 and 32. Now if we have a 3 digit number, then we have more combinations that could work. So if the 100 place is a 1, then the tens place can be a 2 or a 3. So when the 100 place is a 1 and the tens place is a 2, we're left with one option. Then we have 132. And using the same logic of keeping one the same, like I always like to do, I keep the largest one the same and then manipulate the other ones as much as possible so that I don't get complicated. Um, so that I don't get confused and it doesn't get too complicated to figure out 
multiple combinations, especially when there's a large, um, no, a large variety of combinations that can be made. And we can make the hundreds place at two. And we have 213, 231, 312, and 321. So those, are, those numbers are gonna be our possible combinations. And out of these, we're gonna circle the prime numbers. So two, three, 13, 23, 31, and that is it. So our prime numbers are gonna be two, three, 13, 23, and 31. So now let's look at the next problem. So the next problem says the product of two prime numbers is 65. What is the sum of the two prime numbers? What's the difference? So x times y is going to x y is going to be 65. So we can have five and thirteen. And so the sum is going to be eighteen and the difference is going to be eight. And so you guys can just ignore what's written on the page. Um, so the correct solution is going to be sum is 18 and difference is 8 because the two numbers are going to be 5 and 13. And for problem 5, it says the sum of three prime numbers is 30. So x plus y plus c is 30 and x, y, z are all prime numbers. There is more than one answer. Which group of prime numbers gives the smallest product? So the group that gives the smallest product is basically gonna be comprised of the smallest prime numbers possible that fit this equation. And so um, the smallest option would be two plus five plus 23, or we can also have two plus 11 plus 17. So we're gonna figure out which has the smallest product. So two times five times 23 is gonna be 230, and two times 11 times 17 is gonna give us 374. So the smallest product is gonna be 230, so the numbers that give the smallest product is going to be 2, 5, and 23. Now we're going to look at the next problem. So it says, list the multiples of 6 that are greater than 60 but less than 100. Write down the numbers that come right before and after these multiples and write down your observations too. So we're just... The question is just asking you to write down multiples of 6 greater than 60 but less than 100. So it's numbers like 66, um, 72, 78, 84, and so on. And it would end at 97 right before 100. And so wait, it's multiples of 6. So it would be... Ninety-six, right? It's multiples of six greater than sixty, and so, and then it says write down the numbers that come right before and after these multiples. So sixty-five and sixty-seven, seventy-three and seventy-four, seventy-seven and but not 73 and 74, 71 and 73, 77 and 79, 83 and 85, 
95 and 97 and so on. And so um, yeah, uh, you can write down your observations and or just think of observations that you can see with these numbers and then we'll go over next problem now. And so it says A is a prime number. A plus 6, A plus 8, A plus 12, A plus 14 are also prime numbers. What is A? So if A is 1, 1 plus 6 is 7, so that's a prime number, but 1 plus 8 is 9. And that is not a prime number, so A is not 1. We'll just guess and check if A is 2. Um, all these numbers are going to become even, and so A is not 2. And not only is A not 2, but A is not an even number, because we're adding even numbers, and we know that even numbers plus even numbers are going to give us an even result, and all even numbers are not going to be prime numbers except for 2, but 2 is not a possibility here. So A is not going to be an even number, and we should add an odd number to even numbers like 6, 8, 12, and 14 to get an odd result that can be prime. So let's try when A is 3. So when A is equal to 3, 3 plus 6 gives us 9. 9 is not a prime number. 9 is a composite number because it has more than two factors, so A is not 3. Now when a is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11, 5 plus 8 is 13, 5 plus 12 is 17, and 5 plus 14 is 19. So all are prime numbers, and so a is going to be 5. Now looking at problem 8, the sum of two prime numbers is 50, and it says find the biggest possible product of the two prime numbers. And so x plus y is 50. And so we're going to look for combinations of prime numbers that give us 50. And those, and it's going to be numbers like 3 and 47. And so that would be the biggest product. So we have, oh, and we also have 7 and 43 as an option as well. So we'll take the product of both and see which one is greater. 3 times 47 is going to be 141 and 7 times 43 is going to give us 301 And so 301 is going to be the larger product. And so the biggest possible product would be 301. And looking at the next, um, for the problem that we just did, uh, I forgot about different combinations. So we'll go over them as well. Um, not only is 3, 47, and 7, and 43 an option, but we also have 13 and 37, which add up to 50. Both are prime numbers. We also have 19 and 31. So we'll take the product of those as well. And so the product is going to be 481 for 13 and 37. For 19 and 31, we're going to get 589. And so 589 is going to be the largest product. Sorry for the confusion. Now let's move on to the next problem. So it says write down three prime numbers that have a sum of 27. 
so possible numbers would be 3 plus 5 plus 19, 3 plus 7 plus 17, or 3 plus 11 plus 13. So it says, what is the biggest possible product of these three prime numbers? So 3 times 5, 5 times 19 is going to be 15 times 19. 3 times 7 times 17 is 21 times 17. 3 times 11 times 13 is 33 times 13. So we'll test these out. 15 times 19 is going to be... 285. 21 times 17 is going to be 357. And 33 times 13 is going to be 429. And so 429 is going to be the largest possible product. Now, um, let's look at whether these numbers are prime numbers or not. So for A, is 91 a prime number or not? Um, 91 is not a prime number since it can be divided by 7. So we'll say no. For 101, it is a prime number because the only factors it has are 1 and itself, 101. So it's yes. For 119, it is divisible by um, 7. It's divisible by 7 because 119 divided by 7 is going to be 17. So it's, no, it's not a prime number. For 123, it's not a prime number because it's divisible by 3. For 127, it is a prime number because the only factors it has is 1 and 127, so it's self. And 133 is not a prime number because it's divisible by 7. Now we're just going to practice prime factorization. So we're only just going to go over A, C, E, and G. So for A, if we do prime factorization, we can divide it into 12 and 10. So that gives us 3, 7, 2, and 5. So we can write this as 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. For 286, we can um, express it as 2 and 143, and 143 can be divided into 11 and 13. So we can write 286 as 2 times 11 times 13. For 221, we know that um, this is divisible by, we can express that as 17 times 13, so prime factorization would be 13 times 17. And then for G, we have 1,105, so we can express that as 5 times um, 221, so we can write that as 5 times 13 times 17. Now, the next problem says, to test if a number is a prime number, we must first find the number k such that k squared is greater than the number we're testing, and divide the number by all the prime numbers smaller than k. So I know it sounds confusing, but first, to test if, for example, 529 is a prime number or not, we're going to find a number k 
so that the square of k is going to be greater than 529. So for example, 20, the square of 20 is going to be 400. So we need a number greater, greater than 20. So 25, let's try that. That gives us 625. And so k can be 25. Then we're going to divide 529 by all the prime numbers smaller than 24. So I know the problem in the textbook used 24, but 25 also works. So we're now going to divide um, 529 by prime numbers less than 25, since we use 25. Um, then the prime numbers are going to be 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 17, 19, 23. And so if we divide 529 by these prime numbers, um, 529 divided by 23 is divisible because it gives 23. And so we know that it's not, we know that 529 is not a prime number because it's divis, it's, it has more than one, fa it has more than two factors. And for a number to be a prime number, the only factors it should have is one and itself. So if 529 was a prime number, it should have only had one and 529 as a factor. But we know that 23 is a factor because it's divisible by 23, so um, 529 would not be a factor. So basically, instead of, so what I think is beneficial and more helpful though, is instead of finding for k and all that, um, you just try dividing with numbers and see if anything can, um, if the number is divisible by any number, then basically it's not a prime number. So sometimes it's better to just guess and check rather than use it, try to use strategies because it can complicate things at some times. And that is it for our lesson today, and I'll see you guys in the next video.